All right. Welcome back, guys. Today, we are joined by Wendy Meyer. She is the founder of Meyer's Detox. She is a heavy metal detox expert and is a functional diagnostic nutritionist. She is a best-selling author, host of the Myers Detox podcast, and is very passionate about educating people on the importance of detox so they can live a long, healthy, disease-free life. Her website is an incredible treasure trove of information, including her amazing program, the Myers Detox Protocol and Mitochondria Detox. There's just such beautiful information both on her YouTube channel as well. Um, she is the queen of the detox scene. Please welcome Wendy Myers. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for being here. We uh, met at ESETI. We met you and Nikki Sky. We were all interviewed by James Gilliland and we heard you and Nikki talk and it was really interesting what you guys were sharing about the detox and everything. But what brought you to ESETI? Well, you know, I'm in a, a group. Uh, I'm in a, a group with my, my friend Nikki Sky, and and we are all trying to make a contact with extraterrestrials. And so it's through a process called Ascension, where we're just connecting with our creator and connecting with our, you know, our, our guide teams and uh, other extraterrestrials, other conscious beings and beings with consciousness. And so it's been a really wild ride <laughs> to say the least. And uh, so we all decided to go to a study. We kind of felt called to go there and witness for ourselves what was the phenomena that was happening there, that little thin veil that connects our dimension to that dimension. And it was uh, really a, an incredible life-changing experience. It was my first time being at ESETI and I agree, it was totally life-changing. And the energy there um, is just unlike anything else. It was quite frankly, incredibly transformative. Oh yeah, exactly. So being at ESETI, uh, what have been your experiences with ETs or um, connection with extra dimensional beings, that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, the first day that we were there, we saw 70 UFOs and it uh, it was mind blowing. I mean, we saw ones that were flying fast, ones that were flying slow, one big ones, little ones. And you could see them with the naked eye. I took them with my iPhone. I took photos of them with my iPhone. They were very clear. And, and some of them you'd see kind of, um, you'd see power up and you'd see kind of a flash of light. And then just, it was so interesting hearing James Gilliland talk about how there'd be very large craft that would come down closer to the ground, really large ones. And all of the kind of supernatural phenomena that was happening on his property, not just sightings of the UFOs. And I had my own really interesting experience as well. I was with um, a group of people. We we all have extraterrestrial souls that um, a very Nikki Sky, who you had on the show, um, brought this to my attention. I thought, okay, well. Um, you know, that's uh, pretty interesting and tell me more. And so uh, she just has a group of about 700 people that she's um, helping to discover who they really are and their purpose on this planet. And so um, for me and this this group of people, like 10 people that came, uh, one of them, her name is Luba, very good friend of mine. And she, James Gilliland kind of looked at her and said, you know, I think you have something from your childhood, eight years old that needs to be cleared. And would you, would you mind if I cleared it? She was like, sure. And so I just watched this, this happen and her body was just like swaying and she was just having obviously a very pleasurable experience and having this kind of negative energy leave her body or whatever trauma she experienced at eight years old. She's from the Ukraine. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on there even during her childhood. And, um, so, and after he did that, um, and it, it, and he said, Mary Magdalene had come into her healing and, and he said that he had, there's a lot of people there go there. I have spontaneous healings in their health. And, um, he just, he just, as it maybe a conduit where he, he calls in different beings to heal people, he's not doing it himself. And so I said, Hey James, you know, I'm having this lower back problem. Could you help, help me out? <laughs> and, um, so he just looked at me and said, sure. And then all of a sudden I, I heard the, the word Jesus in my head and he said, okay, Jesus is right behind you and he's going to be doing energy healing. And I was like, yes. And, um, 
And so I just felt this just amazing energy. And I've done energy healings before. And I was like, meh, you know, I just didn't really feel anything. Um, but I definitely felt this. I definitely felt really, uh, felt really good. I felt very emotional. I was crying a little bit. And um, then it took a couple of minutes. And then after that, James said, you know, I feel like you need some male supportive energy because the lower right side of your back where my issue, my pain was for the last three months where I couldn't work out or walk or anything. He said, that's usually due to lack of male supportive energy. And it's like hit the nail on the head right there. And so uh, he came over, he said, can I give you some male supportive energy? I was great. So he did that. And I felt some, this very warm, amazing energy coming through me. And then after that, my back didn't hurt. Um, and he, it, it didn't, it wasn't in pain, it, but I still kind of felt it, but it took a few days. And five days later, I went to Costa Rica for my 50th birthday and I hiked five hours. Wow. And that just never, never would have happened. Never. Because I, I couldn't even go on a walk for 45 minutes prior oh, wow. to this experience. So it was really, really profound for me. And there's a lot of, a lot of crazy activity going on in a setting, a lot of amazing things. What a beautiful yeah. story from yeah. you, Seti. I love it. Yes. Yeah. That I can't believe is... you saw so many ships. Yeah. And that was just the first night I was there three nights. The second night we saw about 50, the third night about 50. So they're there. I mean, there's no, no doubt. You know, we had uh, a military grade infrared goggles that you could view them more close. We had white phosphorus goggles that you could view uh, certain types of beings uh, that were like flying around. Um, I forget exactly what they, those were exactly, but they call them orbs and um, just a lot of stuff you can see just with the naked eye. And there was one night where there was a large ship and there were like 15 maybe smaller ships, kind of like strung like pearls. They were kind of hovering around the big ship and a lot just, you know, and James kind of surmised that, you know, there's a lot of a lot of strange things happening on the planet right now where the dark is working for the light. There's like this battle between good and evil going on that we see here on the planet earth, but also you said extraterrestrially, there's also the same kind of battle going on where uh, there's been some negative uh, extraterrestrials that have been defeated or destroyed. And that the, the crap that we're seeing are, there are positive ETs that are on patrol. They're patrolling the earth and protecting it because there's a lot of very important, profound things that are going to be happening here. And um, so they're protecting the planet. So that, that's his explanation for why we're seeing them fly around the skies. I really think, too, the reason that we're able to see them there so much is because the energy of that land is so much higher. I think that's why because I've heard different people talk about they'll see something in the sky and the people around them can't see it. And if you're in a, an energy space that isn't as high vibrational, you're not going to be in alignment with whatever dimension they're in and being out of place. Like you said, you're already at a really high vibrational resonance. And so it makes it so much more likely that you're going to see all these things because it's like, I look at the sky all the time and I definitely don't see the amount of activity that he has there. It's unreal. We got there the second night that you were there. So we saw like a fair amount of things, but yeah, we heard that the night before we got there, you guys just had an incredible amount of, um, of activity. And I think he had shared, you guys shared some of the, some video footage of some of those craft. And it was just, it was so cool. We were sad that we missed that, but it was still like, what we saw was incredible. And we had, we had our own experience and it was just such a beautiful, uh, a beautiful place and time to be. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I agree with you about, you know, uh, being at a certain frequency, you know, because this group I was with, we have worked very, very hard on our releasing our emotional trauma. And uh, so that we raise our frequency, you don't have all these kind of negative low frequency energies and trauma is kind of uh, weighing you down, so to speak. And that frees you to connect to source or, or connect with, with, uh, higher conscious beings or whatnot, because they, they require kind of more of a clear conscious, uh, kind of a, a higher frequency. These are very high frequency beings, millions, millions of years more advanced than us. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, I think traumas and negative feelings that we have, they just don't, they just don't relate to. So for us in this group I was in, we've worked for a couple of years on, 
raising our frequency. And when we got there, we also consciously um, kind of sat in a circle and we're calling them in, you know, like a, our, our intentions are positive. We made an intention to that we're here to make contact with you. And I mean, we think maybe that's why we saw so much activity on Thursday night when we arrived. I have no idea. Um, but but yeah, you you do kind of need uh, to be, quote, clear, uh, I think, to to make contact. And that's, I think, with some people, they're not able or no, they don't really maybe have awareness about ETs, but uh, you do have to be a kind of a little bit more clear, so to speak, or have an extraterrestrial soul which it's estimated that about 9% of people on the planet do have extraterrestrial souls. And there's a, you know, I think people that have seen ETs, um, for, there's a reason for that to maybe bring the fact that they have an ET soul, bring that into their awareness, you know? Um, I'm speculating here, but, um, you know, and I think that there's just uh, more and more people are becoming aware of the, the presence of extraterrestrials, but they're also... ETs here on the earth to help the planet, help the planet ascend, help make the planet a better place, help to help this, the fight, this battle between dark and light uh, that, that's going on where we see a lot of this coming to the surface is crazy stuff. I mean, just five years ago, you'd be like, no way would and any of this stuff be happening right now or people being make accounts being shut down if they did a protest or just all the craziness that we're seeing right now, whatever the, the deal is, there's just a lot of crazy stuff that you never would think uh, would be happening. But I think it's that, that, that dark though is working for the light, you know? And, um, 100%. but yeah, but yeah, I think people do need to like on the planet need to work on their trauma, releasing their trauma, having awareness of it so that they themselves can just be happier people and also step into their life purpose be it as someone with an ET soul that's helping other people on the planet or what have you. I think that leads us perfectly into, I know, like, I do want to talk about your, um, like actual heavy metal detox and mitochondria de detox, but I know you also mentioned, and I remember this now from ESETI, you have the emotional detox. And, um, I forgot to look into that. I was so focused on the amazing, like physical benefits that you provide. So I would love for you to touch on all of those things. Yes. Yeah. Well, so I, and I think I realize in, you know, I'm working on focusing on heavy metal detoxification for the last 10 years. I have a tremendous amount of education on my website about that, but I think because I've gone into the emotional detox part of things is becoming aware of your trauma and how to release it with sound therapy. And there's a lot of conventional medical research surrounding releasing your emotional trauma, intergenerational trauma, childhood development trauma, things that happened to us at the hands of our caregivers as a child. Um, but I have done a lot of research around that. And these two factors are very important to work on so that you can um, in, in, not increase, but connect to your spirituality. So you can connect to God or source or your creator or whatever you want to call him so that you can um, connect with higher consciousness beings like extraterrestrials, you know, and become more of a high conscious, higher frequency being yourself. And it, the two requirements for that are removing toxins from your body that are interfering in every different um, organ pathway, every different organ system, your brain functioning, people have their pineal gland cla uh, calcified by fluoride and other toxins. And you can't, you can't be, um, an intuitive being. You can't connect to your creator when it's your pineal gland is calcified with fluoride. And so, and I think there's a dumbing down of society. I think that fluoride is being intentionally put into, our water um, and into in release, release into our environment and the air, et cetera, for that specific purpose. Because there are a lot of dark entities and the negative elite that they don't want people connecting to God and then having that power within them, realizing how powerful they are, what a powerful manifester and creator that they are of their lives, you know, and they don't have to be ruled by these people or told what to do, you know. 
So, uh, so it's a very important to detox and it's very important to release your emotional trauma because these, these lower your vibration, your frequency. And when you're all mired in all these physical health issues caused by these two issues, because the research is very clear that people that have emotional trauma have seven times the depression. They have, uh, you know, 16, 16% increased rates of smoking. They have 12 times the rate of suicide. Uh, they have twice the rate of heart disease, twice the rate of obesity, uh, six times the, the rate of lung disease. I can go on and on and on and on. They have more obesity and they have more drug use, alcoholism, et cetera. Um, so uh, people need to be working on these two things to be healthy, to feel good. Because if you're constantly trying to figure out what's going on with your health and you're exhausted all the time and you're overweight, you don't, you don't have any mental space left over to, you don't have the luxury to focus on spirituality or um, or creating with beings of higher consciousness, like extraterrestrials, you just don't, you don't have that, you know, you don't have that luxury. And so I think that for me, my purpose on this planet is helping people bring awareness around these two things and help them do that successfully so that they are able to connect with their creator. You can find the full link video by going to allianceofexperiencers.com and joining our community. We'd love to see you there and hear your story.